Hi, this is Dr. Scott Hoar, and today is Treatment Tuesday, and this week our patient is Chad Hodson. Chad is the Assistant Director of Wellness at Blunt Memorial uh, Wellness Center. Uh, so that's the, the local hospital right here in Alcoa in Maryville, uh, Tennessee. I saw you, you circled on your history form uh, arthritis. What in particular? Uh, that's my knee. The knee arthritis, yeah. okay. Fair enough, yeah, you see the nice big discs, mm -hmm. spaces right here, and then as we get to L4, L5, L5, S1, not so much, and a little bit of that lateral kind of tilting, a little bit. So you have just a little bit of degeneration in the lower part of the spine, uh, which I've got way more than you do. Oh, really? So, yeah. Keep your teeth together, touch your chin all the way down to your chest. Good. What do you feel right there? Any stiffness, discomfort, forcing, pulling? Just a little bit, a uh, little tension in my neck. Where? Can you point to it? Okay. All right. Now look back as far as you can. Good. What do you feel right there? Uh, it just feels like a nice stretch. Okay. Good. All right. Back to neutral. Keep your shoulders quiet. Rotate your head to the right as far as you can. Looking at the camera. Good. Now all the way to the left. Good. Any stiffness or discomfort? No. There. Okay, good. Let's face this wall. You're going to reach down the middle of your back as far as you can. Good. Other side. A little bit more difficult than that side. You're right-handed? Yes. Okay, relax. Reach from down below as high up as you can. There you go. All right. With this one, reach from down below as high up as you can. All right. A little bit limited. Any discomfort? Yes. Where? Uh, rear delt. Okay. All right. Turn and face this way. Bend over, touch your toes. Feet together all the way. And that's not so fun, huh? What do you feel? Oh, uh, just, uh, just a little bit in my hamstrings, around the back of my knee, stretch. Come on up. Put your hands over your head. Lean back as far as you can. And what do you feel there? That shaking. Yeah. Any discomfort? Uh, it's almost like a weakness, I feel. Yeah. <sighs> Relax. Now turn and turn. look at the camera. Good. Other side. Any discomfort with either of those two? <laughs> OK, turn and face this wall. Feet about shoulder width apart. Put your hands over your head. Squat as low as you can. And up. Any pain, stiffness, discomfort? Uh, just stiffness in my left knee, but that's... Yeah, well, it's cut with the ACL. Yeah. Um, and if you, if you did a tricep extension with it or a bicep curl? No, a curl. If I'm curling, it does. So you feel pain right now with that? When I curled it, yeah, for sure. All right, give me three or four more just so we can kind of... Ooh, yeah. Uh, okay, that's enough. Okay. Okay, so looking through uh, Chad's medical history, his x-ray, his initial movement assessment, some of the things we saw was number one, limitation in his neck range of motion. If you can't move through the neck very well, it's going to put a lot more stress on your upper extremities. As well, his right shoulder had a little bit of limitation and uh, pain and discomfort during uh, extension with rotation. If you can't move through the shoulder, that's gonna put a lot more stress on the elbow. So we're gonna be looking at those things because he's been dealing with that, that medial epicondylitis that he's been noticing. As well, we had him bend over, touch his toes and lean back. He was not moving comfortably. Uh, with good range of motion through the lower body, through the hips in particular. So we got a lot to work on today, so let's jump right into it. So tell me, what can we help you with today? Well, I've had some chronic back issues uh, dating back to bulging disc in L4, L5. Uh, kind of keeps me from doing a lot of the things I like to do, like lifting and running. And then along with that, I've uh, got some medial epicondylitis that has uh, really flared up in the last several months. And That's right on the inside of the elbow. Okay. Um, how long has it been going on with the back stuff? The back's off and on for, for several years now. Mm -hmm. um, and 
that's from doing a lot of running and lifting and that's the harder I go that's when it seems to get agitated okay um, the medial epicondylitis just in the last three months or so okay Yeah, it's called motion palpation. You're, you're, we've done it 10 million times, right? And you feel for the joints that are restricted versus the ones that are not. Like right there, there's some nice give in the joint. Right there, there's not. Can you tell that? I can. I can. All right. So then that's what we're going to adjust. Good. Okay. And now I'm going to start on this side because this is obviously the affected side. All right, we're gonna start with a series of muscle tests and that's gonna tell me what's working well, what's not working so well, and what we need to address. Okay. So make a fist right there. What I'm gonna do is push your elbow down to the table. Resist okay. that motion, ready? Awesome. Your thumb and your pinky, bring them together. I'm gonna to pull them apart. Don't let me do that. Ready? Again, come on. Not so strong, right? Yeah. Okay, so the nerves that control that come out of your C8 and T1 nerve roots. So what I'm going to do is an adjustment to that area to help out. Okay. All right, ready? Not any better. Okay, so now we're going to go down to the wrist and fingers themselves. Any uh, history of issues around here? Thumb and pinky, pulling apart, not so good. All right. So when we do chiropractic adjustment, it's the speed uh, of the stimulation of the nerves that has that inhibitory or reset button effect. So it's always important that an adjustment is, is quick. Mm -hmm. And sometimes with extremities, like your wrist, and you do have some hand and just carpal restriction in here, we want to make sure we can adjust that with good speed. So this speeder board right here is going to help me do that in a way that doesn't cause any discomfort to you. Put your thumb and your pinky together, pulling apart. Not perfect, but a little bit stronger. A little better there. Okay, I'm going to check something else. Straighten your hand. I'm going to pull towards me. Don't let me do that. Good, any irritation? Pushing towards you, don't let me. Any irritation? Hold it right there. What I'm gonna do, keep your arm straight, I'm gonna stabilize your hip and push this way. Yeah. Don't let me do that. Ready? And that's pretty tough, yeah? Yeah. So that's, those are actually your pecs, your pec major that we just tested. So I'm gonna do an adjustment uh, right off of your sternum to your clavicle. Just. Good. A lot of fun, wasn't it? Yeah, that's... <laughs> Not so much. I know. <laughs> Hold it right there. I'm going to push out. Don't let me. And that was a lot stronger, wasn't it? Good. Um, bring your elbow in at your torso. What I'm going to do is pull it out like that. Okay. Don't let me do that. Again, pretty good. Make a fist. I'm going to push down. Don't let me. Very strong. Good. Make a fist. I'm going to push your elbow down. Don't let me. Again, any irritation there? Uh, minor. Just minor. It didn't seem as strong and easy as the other side to yeah. me. So what I'm going to do, that's the coracobrachialis muscle. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to adjust your AC joint. Good. Good. Hold it right there. I'm pushing down. Don't let me. And that was a little bit stronger, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Very, very good. Your thumb and your pinky, bring them together. I'm pulling them apart again, and not so good. So we'll go back to your uh, neck. Come on, it's the pinky, man. The pinky's not strong. Well, <laughs> just <laughs> it's, it's actually, remember that little segment right between the bottom of your neck and the beginning of your thoracic spine yeah. that I said there was a little bit of degeneration and bone spurring? That's really what we're testing right here. Oh. So it would make sense that hand and wrist and finger strength are, are an issue. Well, and even that, though, 
I felt the pain in my el elbow. Oh, uh, with this one? Yeah. Okay. Well, it just tells us we're treating the right thing here. Good. Let that drop. Very good. Thumb and pinky. Pulling apart. That was a lot stronger, wasn't it? I still want to get in here because I think your wrist extension is just not as easy as I think it should be. Good. Thumb and pinky, pulling them apart. A lot better. Elbow in at your torso. I'm gonna pull your elbow out that way. Don't let me. And that, that's not easy. That's not, yeah. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna put your right palm on your ear. Okay. I'm gonna stick my thumb in your armpit. I'm gonna wrap my hand around your shoulder blade. We're gonna hit the rib cage underneath your shoulder blade. So. Relax your elbow. Good, and I'm gonna adjust down like that. Deep breath, breathe on out. Ooh. <laughs> Very good. Okay, you okay? Yeah. <laughs> elbow in here, I'm gonna pull out, don't let me. That was a lot stronger, wasn't it? Make a fist, I'm pushing down, don't let me. Very good. I'm pushing out like that. Don't let me. Pretty strong. Did that hurt? Yeah, I feel it kind of in right in my pec minor. Um, maybe it's something my dealt. So I'm just palpating your where your sternum and your clavicle meet, seeing where there's good motion, where there's not. And on top, that seems a little bit when I push inferior with it just seems restricted so we'll bring it back here give you a little adjustment hold it right there pushing that way don't let me that's better less irritation yeah straighten your hand I'm gonna pull towards me don't let me and that is an issue isn't it so we just tested your bicep and your bicep was pretty weak. One of the things that can have a huge impact on that is this bicipital tendon. You know, there's this little groove in the anterior part of the humerus here that it can easily slip out of and cause all sorts of irritation. So I'm gonna make sure that it's not. And I imagine this is Tender as all heck. Yeah, it is a little bit. Oh, yeah. Right there. Okay. Straighten your hand. I'm pulling towards me. Don't let me. Big difference, wasn't it? Big difference. Night and day, really. Mm -hmm. Uh, Straighten your hand. I'm going to push towards you. Don't let me. And that is also weak. Yeah. So this is a tricep test, and I'm really looking for elbow integrity here. So let me dive deeper into it, seeing that it was weaker. Let's flex your wrist. I'm going to push from right here. Resist that motion. Again. Okay. Extend your wrist. I'm going to push from right there. Don't let me. Again. Let's do this one again. Ready? Go. So that's probably the weaker one, right? When you were extended, not terribly bad. When you were flexed, not very good. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to check out your elbow joint now. Can you lock this out? Does it hurt to lock it out? Relax everything. Yeah.
bent wrist. I'm pushing it towards you. Don't let me. Straighten your hand. Pushing towards me. Don't let me. That was stronger, wasn't it? Better, yeah. Good. Okay. Hold it right here. I'm going to push down. Don't let me. And that's not easy. Okay. Scooch down two inches. So that's the anterior deltoid test. Hold it right there. Pushing down. Better, yeah? Better. Bend here. I'm going to pull your elbow forward. Don't let me do that. That's plenty strong. Okay, good. So your external rotation, that kind of supination of the forearm, is a little bit tight. I'm going to do a little bit of active release technique. It's a myofascial release. So we can start restoring a little bit of the freedom of movement of your elbow that we really want. Does it hurt? No, it feels kind of good like a good stretch. So I'm releasing both of your pronators, pronator uh, teres and pronator quadratus, because I think they're a little stiff. I think they're limiting your ability to supinate your arm, which kind of leads to kind of the more internally rotated shoulder, shoulder girdle sort of yeah. thing. So. So he's having pain and discomfort right here in the elbow. So I'm going to put some kinesio tape. It's uh, this is called rock tape on the area. You ever used rock tape? I have not. Have you ever heard of it? Yes. Okay. So we'll put it right over the area, and that's going to help to pull up on the skin a little bit and get a little bit more blood flow in the area, which is going to help. And then we want to encourage a little bit more supination or external rotation of the area. And so I'll use again this rock tape to help with that. All right, so I'm going to do a mid and upper back adjustment now. So I'm just going to feel around a little bit. All right. Take a deep breath. Put your chin to your chest. Breathe out. Good. Another chin to chest. That same area, I really don't like how that's moving. And I think that's limiting your entire thoracic spine extension and rotation. So we're going to give it another adjustment. Deep breath. Breathe out. Good. OK. Good. So the extra rotation of the one hip, I don't think is helping anything. Yeah, you can externally rotate the right hip pretty decently. And then the left hip, you feel how that's not so easy? Yeah, yeah. All right. So I'm going to do a little bit of adjustment. Good. 
good. All right. Now we do some muscle tests. So I'm gonna push your elbow down like so. Don't let me do that. Ready? Go. Again, not so strong. Other side, pushing down, don't let me. Plenty strong, right? So hamstring, uh, vast majority of the innervation comes out of the L5 nerve root. So I'm grabbing L5, put a little motion in there. Take a deep breath, breathe that out. Very good. Hold your leg right there. I'm pushing down. Don't let me. A little bit better, yes? Was better, yeah. Good. Now, I want you to raise your knee up towards the ceiling. Hold it up right there. I'm going to push your knee into the table. Don't let me. Go. Okay. Not too bad. No irritation? Nope. Knee up. Hold it up right there. Pushing down. Oh, no. Not so good on that side, huh? Yeah. Breathe out. Good. Hold it up right there, pushing down. A little bit better. Not amazing, but a little bit better. Yeah. That almost feels more like a stretch. Yeah. Good. Keep going. Give me two or three more. Pause right there, deep breath. And back towards me. That first exercise we had you do, it's called can openers. Okay, now the purpose is to stay engaged with your lower half, all right, to stabilize your lower back and your pelvis while encouraging good flexibility with your thoracic spine and your rib cage. We noticed that was a limited area, and we noticed when I did an adjustment, it was pretty darn tender of that area, which is a sign of dysfunction of the area. What was that like for you getting that area moving a little bit better? Oh, uh, that's, I mean, I can already tell just, just by touching my toes, just a more fluid movement. Mm -hmm. Um, the stiff, I don't have quite a bit as much stiffness. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Last one. Pause, deep breath. Exhale out all the tension. So in a second, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a stability check during your hip extension. So you're going to raise your butt up off the floor. I'm going to bully you around. There's two possible outcomes. Number one, you got good control. Looks like this. Number two, you have bad control. It'll look like that. So raise your butt up. Not amazing, mm -hmm. right? Which we're not surprised about mm -hmm. based on how it felt uncomfortable when you're doing that glute bridge. So let me try something. Relax your head and everything. I'm going to push from out to in here. I want you to just resist me. And now raise your butt up. And down. Do it again. Make sure you engage nicely. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Engage nicely first. Good. And now raise your butt up. And down. Any discomfort? Raise up. Make sure you engage this first. Raise up, hold it, and that's a lot better, isn't it? So, give me this hand. I want you to hold it right there. You can relax here. I'm going to push right there, and you're going to resist. And now raise your butt up, and down, and up, and down. The, um, the second exercise, we did um, single leg glute bridge. That was looking at your ability to extend your hip while having a neutral protected spine. What was that like for you? It was kind of humbling because that was more challenging than I expected it to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what we do is by, by hugging the one knee to the chest, you're causing flexion of one hip, one side of your pelvis, and you're extending the other hip. So we're looking to neutralize not only the pelvis, but the lumbar spine so we can really isolate pure hip extension without adding excessive movement to the, to the lower back and to the pelvis. Because we, what we want you to do is learn how to have no movement, 
in those L4, L5, L5, S1 segments as you get great movement from your hips, especially during your lifts, but just during your day-to-day -day lives as well. So you were learning that during extension with the one hip, you really didn't have control. Mm -hmm. So we created, uh, we did an isometric lateral uh, core activation, and that created the stability and control. And the more you do that, the better it will go. Okay, so that was your treatment. Chad, how did that go for you? Uh, that was great. Uh, as I was saying off camera, that's far more comprehensive than anything I've had done before. Um, and identified several weaknesses that I could work on. Uh, that was pretty awesome. With the, uh, the elbow, the kinesio tape, uh, I want you to keep that on for as long as you can until it starts fraying and getting, and getting gross. Uh, I think restoring proper motion with your neck, your thoracic spine, and your shoulders is going to be a big key to getting your elbow a little bit better. I don't think you have any major tears or, or fractures or you know anything crazy mm -hmm. with the medial epicondylitis. I just think that um, that kind of internal rotation posture, which I'm exaggerating, it's not terrible with you, but you could tell your forearms didn't want to be neutral. Your shoulders don't want to be neutral. I tested the one external rotation. It's actually a rhomboid muscle test, but we're really looking at your ability to externally rotate your entire shoulder girdle. That was weak. So we fired that up. We fired up your neck and your shoulder, and we improved things. Um, and you could tell less pain during the bicep curl, which is a good start. Um, I, I'd recommend further treatments to, to really clean that up the way we want to so you can get back to lifting the heavy weights you want to. Do you have any questions um, about anything? No, that was great. It was very helpful. Awesome. Uh, well, like I said earlier, Chad is the Assistant Director of Wellness at Blunt Memorial Hospital, and they've got an awesome um, fitness and health program at that hospital. And really, that's not a very common thing for hospitals to have these days. So it's really in the forefront of, of what people really need. So check out Blunt Memorial Hospital for, for that sort of thing. Uh, Chad, thank you so much for, for being a great patient and a good sport in front of the camera here. Yeah. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, leave a comment below, hit the like, and tune in for Treatment Tuesday next week. Take care.